and welcome to another episode of Adulting Without Supervision. I may look a little worse for wear than normal, but that has entirely everything to do with the fact that I just spent the ninth weekend in a row fighting a whole bunch of trees and trying to fix my fence. The good news is, it's mostly done, and I'm going to have a couple of videos on the things I bought to help me do that. The bad news is, I'm not quite done, and I'm slowly hating myself more and more, because I'm also sick while doing it. But Today we're going to be doing a much simpler project. That project being what looks to be the world's most lame version of nunchucks. This is actually the anode rod for my water heater. This is a flexible one, so I don't have to tilt the water heater to get this in. And I'm gonna use a hacksaw to get the old one out so I don't have to tilt it then either. Now, the anode rod, for those of you who don't know, is a piece of sacrificial metal, basically, Rust happens, your water heater is made out of metal, water is going through it, rust is going to break it. However, a little nifty piece of chemistry is that if in an enclosed system you have a metal that's more prone to rusting than other metal, that metal will rust before everything else, saving the other metal. So that's the whole basis for this is designed around. You remove the old one, you slot a new one in roughly every five years, and you end up saving yourself a whole bunch of money on not having to buy brand new water heaters. They actually use the same technology on ships. You'll have these big honking bolts that are made of a sacrificial metal, and whenever they do refit, they swap them out to save the ship. Same thing we're going to be doing today. This is here because I want to see what happens if you try to change one of these, not with a normal socket set like I've been shown before, but with an impact driver. Um, I'm hoping nothing breaks or explodes, but you're going to be here to see that. So, let's go ahead and get on to the actual removal and replacement. Okay, sports fans. Okay, sports fans. We're going to actually try to do this again. Um, immediately after I turned off the camera last time, I realized I grabbed the wrong socket. You need a 1 and 1 16th. I got a 1 and a, and a half. So yeah, that's a full one and a half inch socket. I don't know what I'm ever gonna use this on, but I've got it now. What I actually needed is this socket, the one and one sixteenth, and the only way I could find it on short notice is in this set, so I've got all these. So the plan is to see if using a 875 pound impact driver will let us loosen that off there without any of the trouble you normally get from having to fight one of those. Now, we're going to try to transition again. If I find anything else wrong with my plan, you'll be the first to hear about it. Because this show is basically, hey, let's all learn from Josh's mistakes. Scene transition. All right, this that's actually really dusty. Dust, 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 there we go. Dust. And we got both water shut off, both the hot out and the cold in. So you're gonna to wanna to drain the water down to 75%, so you've got the weight of the water in here to help you uh, counter torque for pulling that out. And because I don't have a shut off here, it's going to backfill into here from the rest of the system of the house. So I'm gonna drain a little bit extra so that, that can drain in there without coming out of the hole we're getting ready to put into the tank. Because this anode rod actually goes directly into the tank. Now, there's also two tools that I'm not sure if I mentioned yet, but you're gonna to want to have some good old clamps because there's not enough clearance on this roof to get that whole rod out. So you're gonna to wanna to do is pull the rod out, clamp it down with this, and then hit it with your reciprocating saw. And make sure you've all, you're always cutting above where you have your tool holding it so you can pull it up clamp it again and it won't fall down in there and you'll lose it. That'll stop us from having to lean the entire system over to get it out, which would be a whole pain. So we're also going to turn off the gas here and we'll have to relight that pilot light. There we go. All right, that is off on that system and we'll reignite that later. It's not that big a deal. It's actually a relatively easy system to relight. Now let's make sure that I actually got the right one. Yep, this is our one and one sixteenth. It fits right over there, no wiggle. Now, it was a little tough getting in there around the insulation foam, but that's still way easier than the versions of these where you have to take off this entire cap just to find it hidden somewhere in this insulation. So, we're gonna go ahead and drain a little bit of water, 
then I'm going to set up my torque wrench and we'll see if this will actually be as easy as I hope it will be. Draining water. Try to remember this is just how you drain the water. Wait, no, that's not what that's for. Give me a second. Oh, I'm an idiot. So, I mean, this is not news to you guys, but this you're supposed to operate once a year and it will drain out any naturally occurring minerals that are getting trapped in your water heater. I've owned this for multiple years and I've not done that on a regular basis. Again, the show should probably just be called Learn From Josh's Mistakes. We're gonna drain some of that out and we'll drain it again later when we actually have pressure on the system. But that still got a lot of nasty out. Let me show you. And yes, I'm draining directly to the floor. There's a, actually a uh, hole in this floor for it to run off to. I'm, I'm working on fixing this situation to where everything's done correctly as I learn what I'm supposed to do. But all that came out of there. Along with some white stuff. So, make sure you clear that once a year. I'm gonna turn that off and we are going to grab a hose and attach it to the actual drain. So you just screw that on and then that should just, oh, nope, I'm an idiot. It's got some writing on there and I think it's gonna tell me I need to open that using a screwdriver. Open with screwdriver. Okay, we're gonna still put this hose where it's supposed to go. Remember, don't do this the way we do things. Do it better, learn from my mistakes. That is the theme of today's episode. Screwdriver. Where did you go, screwdriver? Grab a good old multiple screwdriver thing. Oh, nothing's come out of there. Weird. Oh, bad news, man. Okay, I don't know why it wasn't working. That was actually clogged with a bunch of sediment because I've not been emptying this pipe. And now it's just being incontinent all over my floor. And all over, ooh, that's hot and it's all over my shoes. Yeah, try to, there we go. All right. I drained about the amount I wanted to drain and kind of scolded my foot with some hot water. And I learned a valuable lesson that this needs to be operated at least once a year, otherwise sediment will build up and uh, block your ability to even operate that. So I'm gonna give you a close up of where the anode rod is now that all that's drained and set up to where I can do my work. Anode rod on this one is right here. This one and one sixteenth deep socket slots right in. We're gonna be able to pop that right out. I hope. All right, now we're gonna go grab our 875 foot pound of torque. Honestly, with how much sediment was stuck in the bottom and what came out of the uh, relief valve, I'm not expecting a whole lot of the material in this anode rod to be still there. I had planned to change this three years ago. So we're running late. This is a half inch impact driver. And it slots right in there. And we're gonna hit reversal. Holy crap, that worked way, way well. It didn't round off the bolt, which is what I was scared of. Then it kicked too bad and made a horrific sound. But yeah, it's spinning freely in there. If I get my fingers around it, there we go. Oh my God. I hope y'all are getting to see this. I really am. Also, that's burning my finger. There we go, okay. I was really burning my finger. All right, we're gonna give you guys a close up of that. This is the same rod I showed you on the other video. Or well, the different design because it doesn't have the flexible links. Let's me on the same material. Look at how much skinnier that is and how much ick is on that. So yeah, do this more often. Change it about once every five years or more often depending on the area you're in. 
our water around here tends to be more icky even after the filter I put on. So that's more to do with where we're placed geographically. They're actually doing a really good job down at the treatment plant, but uh, I should probably be changing that more often than every five years. Uh, so we're going to saw that out, rip it out, and put the new one in. Probably one of the most underrated things I've bought from Harbor Freight is a pack of these reciprocating saw blades that comes with this really nifty holder. Um, honestly, I've lost a lot fewer of these and poked my hand a lot less too. We're also using the Bauer from Harbor Freight reciprocating saw, 20 volt. We'll only use this for a few days. Yes, I know you're not supposed to put a new, you're not supposed to put a new blade on without removing this battery. I'm stupid sometimes. Um, I've already used this thing in the like week and a half I've had it so much that I broke stuff on it. It's still working, so you know, your mileage may vary. Let's put a little bit more clamping pressure on that. I don't trust that thing to not to, to still not try to fall on me. So we can't get screwed over too badly. I'll be checking that for a gas leak later because this tool fell directly onto the gas line. Uh, it should be able to handle that much stress, but I'm going to double check just in case. But you can actually see this is made out of that metal core going down the middle is made out of a non corrosive metal so that even if you let this go for a while, you can still pull the thing out like you're supposed to be able to. All that that's either calcium or more other deposits and rust. It's actually really interesting to look at so. Alright, now let's do this again with less of a disaster catastrophe. I think with that much cut off we can pull the rest out without needing to cut again. There we go, perfect. We had a decent amount of clearance, just not barely enough. This is what's going on in your water heater if you don't change this out like you're supposed to. Yeah, we're going to clean that off a little bit. Grab my cleaning paintbrush. So useful for cleaning projects off. It's probably a buck or so at any hardware store or dollar store. Once I get the water on this dried out, I will let the Roomba help me clean up the rest of the floor. God bless Roomba. All right, so for this part, all you really need is a little bit of Teflon tape, this, and then the same tools we already used. Take the plastic off. And then just kind of make sure that the insulation is not going to get caught in the threads. If you can, let this, oh, wrong end. Let this go. Uh-oh. There we go. There's corrosion on the other end of this on the inside that is not letting a full-size one of these go all the way down. So, ooh. This one has a little bit of damage on one of the links. Normally I'd say don't use it if it's got damage there. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and do this to show the rest. I'll probably buy another one to slot in here prematurely. There we go. And, okay, I she fits. Anything with plumbing, even if it says it doesn't need it, do a little bit, like a lot less than what I normally do, but just a little bit of Teflon tape. What I found is that Teflon tape hides a lot of sins or a lot of stupidity. Kind of both, actually. So, a little bit of Teflon tape. Why am I hearing an owl? Why am I always hearing owls? I think an owl is roosted in my freaking chimney because I'm hearing an owl sound come out of here. Okay. All right, we put it in there. We're gonna use this to get it lined up with the threads. That's something to thread in. And use my fingers to get it started. And start it with the rest of the way the tool. And I know I goosed it real good to get it out of there, but I am not comfortable using that to tighten it down. So I'm gonna use some hand force, as hand tighten as I can, and then I'm gonna grab my ratchet set, or actually, you know what, I'll just grab a bicep grip, so that should be fine. He said pretending he knew where his 
ratchet set was and instead just doesn't and uh, wants to do this so that he can keep pretending. There you go. Oh, nope. They're not that good. There you go. All right. I'm just gonna put a little bit of leverage. Get it in there real snug. But when it starts really resisting, go ahead and stop. You don't want to break this or shred it in there. All right, this should be the last one. This should be the last one. There you go. All right. The same way you fill out your bolts on a car. So you can strip them. All right. I honestly think that's ready for the pressure test. Moment of truth, Batman. I'm gonna make sure that the nozzles are turned off. All right, there, there. Hopefully you guys don't see me completely fail. That's only so basic. There you go. That was tight. I forgot that I actually turned off the water main before I started this. All right, that sound is all the air coming out. This is getting filled up. I'm not hearing any hissing coming out of here. No, there's pressure, nor am I feeling any water. Let's open up a hot water bottle and let that air out. There we go, that's the air coming out. Still not feeling any water. Oh yeah, we gotta turn this back on. All right, I'm back, and I don't smell gas, so we're gonna count that as good. So that's all set correctly. That fire is on. All right, now back to the desk for a quick overview. All right, that was an adventure, everybody. Back at the table, job's done. Now this is a little bit of cleanup left over. Got all the tools over here, so we can go over that. Got a little bit of cleanup to do over in the actual project area, but overall, project's done. It worked, everything's holding together correctly. So I'm gonna count that as a win. And the rest of the stupid stuff as flavoring, the flavoring of life. Little sprinkles of WTF moments that keep things interesting. So, overall, um, this is actually the first time I've done it myself. I've watched other people do it before. It wasn't that difficult, but also following instructions from seeing somebody else do it and doing it yourself tends to leave with a little bit bigger of a mess than when an actual professional does it. So, if, unless you like getting a little dirty, like I do, whenever I'm working on a project and getting that feeling of, man, I conquered that, you might want to hire somebody to do it for a little bit. But that's money that you don't have to spend if you do it yourself. So, it's up to you. Let's go over all the tools we use compared to the tools I thought I would use and it'll let us all understand exactly how much we learned from my mistakes today. So, starting my right, your left, Cobalt Impact Driver, it's the half inch model with the 875 foot pounds of torque. This Harbor Freight Deep Impact Drive Kit, because this is the actual socket I need. And most places uh, don't carry an impact rated version by itself, or at least the stores I went to didn't. Teflon tape, a clamp to hold the anode rod, reciprocating saw, and blades. I use this Bauer 20 volt, a screwdriver, my fancy little blue Craftsman adjustable, a new anode rod because this one is toast, and some hose. If you have all that or similar things that can fill in for those rolls, you too can change out this. I think I paid 20 ish dollars for mine at the time. The price has probably changed because I bought it three years ago. But you too can change out this $20 part for only $20 your time and whatever tools you need to source instead of paying somebody however much they would charge you. Um, I'll have either here or here or somewhere. I'll have the average cost to get that changed by an actual handyman or a plumber. And there you have it. With these tools, a little bit of time, and new anode rod, you too can change it out without having to hire a professional. You will get a little messy though, so factor that into your cost. This cost me, probably cost me about an hour and a half to actually get this done, all said and done once I had all the pieces together. Having to go run and get a piece or realizing I grabbed the wrong one of these set me back. Besides that, it's a relatively quick job, 
In short, thanks for learning from my mistakes with me. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, etc. I don't know what etc means there. So thanks for watching. Y'all stay safe out there. Actually, that's not down there. Yeah, when you're running. <laughs> if you're doing it the way I do it, you know you've got it tight enough. When your vice grips start moving on the ratchet and not further adjusting. So thanks for watching. Y'all stay safe out there.